Программа «Народная трибуна». Открытый микрофон для всех, кто желает высказать свое мнение. Свое мнение. Телефон прямого эфира 847-400-5200. Здравствуйте. Я имею что сказать. А я думаю, что... Кричать не обязательно. Работают все микрофоны. Все микрофоны. Каждый может... Итак, уважаемые дамы и господа, в эфире «Народная трибуна». Сегодня у нас на трибуне небольшие изменения, но давайте начнем с самого начала. Мы вещаем на частотах 14.30 AM 99.1 FM. Вы нас можете слышать и видеть на нашей страничке в интернете radio.nvc.com и на нашей страничке Facebook Radio NVC, ну и, конечно же, на нашем YouTube-канале Radio NVC. Но если вы желаете пользоваться вашими Apple принадлежностями, айфонами, айпадами, пожалуйста, установите наше бесплатное приложение, и вы нас можете видеть и слышать таким образом. Итак, как я и сказал уже, мы сегодня э, сделали небольшую перемену состава в нашей, или на нашей народной трибуне. У нас в гостях сегодня сюрприз. Это Саргис Сангари, это представитель или кандидат от 9 округа штата Иллиной. Hello, Sergis. Nice uh, to see you. Hello, it's good to be here to speak to the uh, Russian-speaking community of uh, Illinois again. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, with Sargis, we have, um, uh, I guess, a manager um, who no, no. sponsor. I mean, I, I don't know what uh, <laughs> how to make of it, but why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Rafael Agulnik. I work with Sargis, trying to help him organize his presidential campaign and get into the Congress. От девятого округа. Замечательно. Итак, вы услышали у нас в гостях Сергей Сангари, это а, полковник в отставке, а, человек, который прослужил очень долгое время в а, американской армии, а, в спецвойсках. By the way, I didn't ask you last time, which branch were you serving at? Yeah, I was uh, U.S. Army Infantry and Special Operational Forces, so 20 plus years of service. So you were in the Army? Yes. Okay. Uh, ну, итак, армия, uh, отряды особого назначения или спецназначения, так что человек, который, ну, скажем так, uh, знает uh, очень много о том, что происходит не только в стране, но и за рубежом, и, естественно, это наш uh, выбор uh, от девятого округа, все те, которые проживают в девятом округе, все те, которые считают себя республиканцами, просто, ну, скажем так, обязаны проголосовать за господина Сангари. You know what? Let's, uh, let's start where at least you and I left off last time. Uh, because we've spoken a while ago, and uh, I haven't seen you since then, so how is it going so far? Well, I mean, uh, we're close to apocalypse, as they would say. Uh, you know, we went from uh, uh, being able to meet and greet, talk to each other, to the COVID struck, and... Uh, Now you see the riots and the looting that is taking place in the streets. You know, security is compromised. So, and we're now less than 70 some days before the election. So, and uh, my I guess main question today would be, what do you think of everything that's going on? I know it's not your district, but it is our city, big city, Chicago. Uh, management and. Uh, your ninth district, your ninth district to be, which I am very, very positive that uh, that district is going to wake up soon and uh, just really start thinking about their future and future of their kids. So what do you think? What is your vision of all this? Well, I mean, um, we're all interconnected, right? I mean, nothing is Um, nothing is separate from each other. So, right. uh, uh, you know, I was the first candidate to ever come out on Memorial Day weekend when the shooting took place. I actually did an interview, which I haven't posted yet. Sometimes I hold my interviews mm -hmm. because what I said in that interview, it still resonates today. Um, and uh, uh, and 
I wrote a letter. I did a press release um, uh, when the shooting took place in the south side at the funeral home. Mm -hmm. um, I called other Republican candidates, uh, 13 of them. I said, we have to do something uh, because this is going to affect us here. Uh, and um, I got them all together. Um, they asked me to put a press release, mm -hmm. and I did, and all of them signed it. And we went down to uh, the location of the shooting. Uh, first time you had the Republicans really, as a whole, go down there together in a unified voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, we conducted a press, press release there. Uh, and uh, because we knew that what is happening there is going to keep on continuing to grow. Uh, mm -hmm. And you've seen what's happening in Kenosha. Uh, we stood right. with the police in support of the Back to Blue events, which is a new 501c3 that was started by Ashley Ramos, and mm -hmm. I have been giving her advice on it. We have one in my district. Uh, we have others that are coming up soon. Uh, there's a picture of a young lady in Kenosha who's standing between the police and the rioters and holding a sign. She's from our group. Oh, uh, wow. So um, uh, we are actively engaged. I am not just mm -hmm. sitting back waiting for, uh, you know, uh, d what is happening to manifest the way mm -hmm. it wants to because I've seen this. I've been involved in insurgencies. I've fought against them. I ran them. Right. Um, a lot of people don't know, and I didn't say this last time we were here because it wasn't part of it, but in 2015 when we were supporting the Assyrian Christians, the Assyrian mm -hmm. army, not right. Syria, but Assyrians. Assyrians yes, yes. Um, I had one of my commanders who was uh, assassinated by a group of socialist YPG Kurds mm -hmm. that uh, do take money from everybody, specifically uh, from the uh, uh, Russians that are operating now in Syria. Uh, but uh, uh, when one of when they assassinated one of my commanders, um, uh, the Antifa was on the ground. Hmm. Antifa is still, uh, you know, somewhat connected to them. Right. The European and U.S. Antifa, these people didn't go there to train uh, to defeat ISIS. They went there to train so they could apply that trade craft here if they wanted to. So we've been very actively engaged. I've uh, been at the forefront of trying to get domestic tranquility reestablished in our country. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, my friends died in combat. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at how many people died in Chicago shootings, yeah. uh, we're approximately uh, s uh, at almost a thousand people more dead in Chicago violence than the two combined wars we were engaged right. in, where this only the military were killed in both Iraq and also uh, Afghanistan. So, yeah, it's uh, I mean uh, it's sad to say, but uh, the city of Chicago now is known as Chirac. And that's unfortunate. That's not a good thing to be in. So let me translate it for our listeners, and I will go on from there. Итак, дорогие друзья, господин Сангари сказал о том, что он и его соратники держат, то есть они не сидят, ничего не делая, они предпринимают все усилия, все попытки для того, чтобы как-то, ну, во-первых, разрядить ситуацию, обстановку, и несмотря на то, что его округ, в котором он будет баллотироваться, это девятый округ, это, ну, те, которые живут в районах, вот, Дирфилл, Баффл, Гроу и так далее, да, вы все это прекрасно знаете, несмотря на то, что его округ, это девятый округ, но а, даже вот то, что произошло в Чикаго, те из вас, которые следят за новостями, помнят буквально полтора-два месяца тому назад, когда была стрельба в одном из а, funeral homes или там, где шла, будем говорить так, церемония прощания, где а, расстреляли 11 человек, и это было, ну, действительно, это была страшная вещь. Так вот, а, господин Сангари а, вместе со, со своими соратниками, с представителями республиканской партии, организовали так называемый пресс-релиз, где они составили письмо, и с этим письмом они направились вот к тому месту, где было совершено убийство, и там они огласили свою, свое предложение, свой пресс-релиз по разрядке этой обстановки. Ну и кроме этого, <coughs> мы все знаем, что сейчас происходит в Киноша, к сожалению, 
а, опять же, вещи имеют свойство повторяться, такие вот происшествия. И э, господин Сангари э, нам рассказал о том, что когда он участвовал в 2015 году, он участвовал в одной из операций, а так как он на тот момент еще был <coughs> в армии, полковником в армии, он участвовал в одной из операций, э, где э, уже к тому времени э, участвовали против э, войск Соединенных Штатов, участвовали представители организации Антифа, причем не только американцы, но и из других стран. Так что, как мы видим, организация Антифа — это не просто сборище негодяев и подонков, которые случайно оказались там. Это действительно хорошо организованная, простите за ту тавтологию, организация, которая ну, делает свои дела, делает то, чем, на, для чего их нанимали, скажем так, на эту работу. Мистер uh, Сангари, I have a question for you. As far as uh, now that, you know, let's get back to our situation here in the 9th district. Um, as far as things are going on right now, where do you see your, um, you in particular, your purpose in this district? Uh, yeah, for the uh, district, uh, really, it falls under economic build. Uh, it falls under the health care issue with the COVID and then also security. These are the really th the three pillars that you got to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I am a, um, what you will call a uh, fiscally conservative person, but right now we got to try to use money just to settle the situation. And then once the dust settles, we can start dealing with the issues of fiscal responsibilities from the Congress. Well, let me side. interrupt you right here because fiscal conser conservative conservativeness uh, is obviously is a very important thing for the Republicans. But in your personal opinion, right now, is this really a good time to be practicing that conservatism uh, no like i said right now uh, as i said uh, i am but right now we gotta make sure the system survives so you cannot stick on certain viewpoints that you have because we get to settle this uh, this issue mm -hmm. of what's happening one out of five uh, uh small businesses not restaurants or anything small businesses small business, right. are not coming back they're done And uh, as far as people, you see, that's yeah. another thing. That's a misconception because a lot of people think when they hear the term small business, they think it's a mama-papa shop. No, it's not mama-papa shop. Yeah, We have some companies with up to 500 people in the company and still considered to be a small business. Correct. So, so. they're going to be gone. They're not coming back. Those are individuals that are tied to family members that mm -hmm. are not going to have jobs. Um, uh, the supply chain issue that sits in China has been affected uh, we you know you got small businesses that even are ordering supply chain right. that majority of it is not coming to them um, I've, I've, I've drove around for the past uh, a couple of weeks trying to find just to to get my own weed whacker that I use to mow yes, the lawn yes. working but the pieces to it you can't find it anywhere yeah. you know you have individuals who have ordered those parts maybe they're getting 18 percent of what they had in stock coming in mm -hmm. the supply chain has been interrupted the companies large companies are not taking those parts and using them for what we call larger end item right. to be able to just to get their products put together to send it out there so um it's a complete uh, disaster when it comes to what's happened to the supply chain Uh, across the board and it's tied to COVID but it's really tied also to what is happening economic fight with where majority of our manufacturing is based so that's why a lot of that business has to come back to right. the ninth otherwise uh, we're not going to be able to survive now smaller companies uh, right now at least there's a hundred companies that have taken it on to themselves not to do business with China mm -hmm. their initial costs are going up for what they have to pay or manufacture when it used to be cheaper in China but you right. see business has realized that you know we don't want to burn our country just for a profit so what I have to do is uh, go into Congress and support those type of businesses with uh, legislations and bills that are going to be able to solidify them and keep them and sometimes yes it would cost money to ensure that that happens so and money just like you used. said going to Congress sometimes not sometimes all of the time that means to have enough correct voices correct. or votes in that Congress 
Correct. in order to achieve, and that's where you come in. Yeah, and look on our part know, anyway. Look, you have to have new faces, new voices. Yes. I, I have served my country well um, in downrange. I've fought for this nation. I've had friends who've died. I don't want their sacrifice to go to waste side as we have riders that burn our businesses. The majority of the people in my district go outside of my district to work and majority of their businesses are outside of my district. Mm-hmm. Some of those businesses have been burned. Some of those businesses were affected when the looting took place on Michigan Avenue. Yes. And those businesses are not coming back. So you have to be able to support those businesses. You have to be able to tie them to international businesses. It's not just what we do internally here. Chicago is one of the largest uh, uh, GTPs when it comes to the business it does with uh, China. But mm-hmm. Chicom, Chinese Communist Party, right. has a lot of effect on our politicians here through those businesses. You saw you saw what happened with the corruption issue. Absolutely. With, uh, with especially, with uh, yes, mm. uh, and we're talking about uh, you know uh, all the electrical bills that yes. you're, you're yes. paying for. AT and T might be now uh, yeah. part of it, um, uh, and the how money is really recycled just for people to stay in power. And some of that money does make its way not just at the local level, but it's also donated by the party. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know that Madigan is not just the he- Speaker of the House. He's the head of the Democratic Party here. Mm-hmm. So he has a right to focus that money where he wants to. Well, exactly. if the money is tied to corruption, guess what? <laughs> it's going to be used for corrupt purposes. For corruption, and, and right. at the end of the day, you're not going to get anything out of it with the uh, pre- uh, with uh, Vice President Biden saying that he's going to raise taxes, guess what? Mm-hmm. That's going to also affect you in the long run at the lower level because if I'm a large business and you raise taxes, I mean, mm-hmm. guess what? I'm going to just push that down on the consumer. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer. I'm not going to suffer because, you know. Because uh, Biden you're, decides you're, so. Because Biden yeah. decided I'm going to tax you. Right. Uh, so uh, it's uh, you have to have folks that go in and are willing to reach across the aisle to work with others. Um, I, I have my own show called New Paradigms that I run mm-hmm. every Monday. Uh, and uh, even I had said on my own show, when I go into Congress, I would like to work with others. Uh, I would uh, be willing to work with uh, whoever is the Speaker of the House, Republican, of course, definitely, mm-hmm. even if they're Democrat. But it's not an help when you have politicians on the Democratic side and even the Republican side that stand out there and just pour fuel on these fires. Yeah by making the statements that are really uh, geared towards them staying in office rather than them fixing the problem. we got to get some adults in there. I have encouraged a lot of my friends who were in the military to go in, and I don't care if they're Republican or Democrat. we got to get people who are now understand our country is in trouble. I don't need to put you on the spot, but since we talk about fresh faces, new faces, uh, let's say the vote comes up on a term, the uh, how many years? Uh, one Con- Congress not going to pass that. Congress just will not pass it. Uh, I mean, well, it let me ask you this: what, it, what what would your vote be? My vote would be to limit terms, but Congress will not pass it. They're not yeah. going to do it. Senate will not uh, adapt as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think that yeah, uh, even if it passes it's <laughs> Congress, it's, it's not going to go past Senate. Uh, they they just don't want to. They're not going to do yeah. it because they're happy with how it is now. The one way you could really uh, throw a you know, wrench into this process is by lifting the number of representatives. There was a cap put, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't just say they didn't want to touch the terms, but they capped the number of representatives. Right. Why? Because then it made them the center, the focus. Mm-hmm. So if you lift that number because our population has grown to match the n- n- gr- n- growth right. in the U.S., that's a simple bill. They could just well, pass. Well, that's what they're trying to it's do with the census. Amend- yeah, but they could have done it with a simple uh, yeah. s- uh, uh, you know, amendment to the current bill, pass right. it with uh, less than, uh, with r- really, you don't have to have a super majority to pass it. You right. can have a m- simple majority to pass it. But if they do that, guess what happens? Now their district shrinks, and they don't become the center and the focus or the right. sweetheart. Yes. Now they have a smaller group of individuals that they represent, and now they have to really, truly, honestly answer to those representatives. So the reason... Yeah, because now it's yeah, personal. Yeah, now it's personal. But yeah. they wanted it to be it the way it is. Look at me. I mean, you know, I have to fight against COVID. I cannot go meet f- people out there. Right. If people don't know who I am, face and name recognition, 
they're going to still walk in and maybe vote for the same incumbent. And I got to go against an incumbent who's got $2.3 million in her coffers, can get another $5.6 million, $10 million if, the, if it gets closer and uh, she's got the airwaves. And uh, You know what you get going for you, though? It ain't my looks. That's for it's, <laughs> well, you know what? You, at this point, you look a lot better than Jen Chakowsky to me. So I mean, I, I can tell you that much. But seriously, that's what you got going for you because, uh, and that's what. Again, I don't want to get into a global situation, but that's what Joe Biden has against him: yeah. is all those years in power and nothing to show for. And that's what you got going for yourself because you haven't been there for those 30, 40, 50 years and have no record of not doing anything. So Yeah, I mean, look, uh, she's been in for more than two decades. That's 20 plus years. No, oh, it's more than 20 yeah. years. Yeah, it's 20 plus years, yeah. of course. And uh, she's from where she herself, not somebody else, right. who has sponsored a bill, yeah. pushed it through the committee and had both sides of the House agree on it and sign it and become a bill She's really cool. had two. That's yeah. it. So one per decade. Yeah. Um, you couldn't run a small business if that was your record. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but people go in. They can't move their finger from here to here. They can't move a fraction of an inch to vote her out. And I'll tell you how it works. Jan Shkansky will hire with her money uh, some professionals to work in her office. Mm-hmm. So she'll hire a young lady who you call, and she's very nice. She's very kind. Uh, she knows how to read the script and you'll say I have an issue as an example of my Medicare and she'll mm-hmm. look oh really okay what's your name and then she'll start searching your name while she's talking to you mm-hmm. on the computer if you come up that you have voted on so many dates guess what now she'll take time to help you mm-hmm. to work on you to do and something. by the way oh how's everybody how's the family doing good well my you know if you say my son's business not doing good oh okay now she is more interested because now she's got the more information out of you right. because okay now I might be able to get money for my reelection process so it's amazing so this is a process that they work and in this process that they work all they're doing is just trying to get you to vote and they know if you voted once for them or twice you have a hard time going back and voting them out. Right. So it's a, they sell you the sizzle on the commercial. Mm. And if you buy it, it is what it is. You know what, let me do this. I'm gonna uh, interrupt and stop for a quick commercial break. After that, I'll take, because I know most of our radio listeners, they pretty well versed in English. So. That's why I didn't stop you because I think what you were saying is too important for me to stop you every two seconds and just put a couple of words in Russian into this conversation. So we're going to stop for a break. Then after that, I'm going to take literally about a minute and a half to just sum that up. Not because I know they know what you're talking about. Just for somebody who is absolutely like lost in space. And I'm going to remind them of the phone number and if they have any questions I'm going to have them call otherwise you and I are just going to have a conversation cool? yes. All right, let's get it done. Итак, дорогие друзья, мы возвращаемся на народную трибуну. Напоминаю, у нас в гостях кандидат от 9 округа штата Иллиной, Сергей Сангари, и мы разговариваем на м, тему того, что происходит, а, идеи, которые появились или появляются э, в связи с ситуацией у нас в стране, в нашем округе. Э, Итак, номер телефона в студии по-прежнему 847-400-5200. Мы принимаем звонки, поэтому, если у вас есть вопросы, господин Сангари, пожалуйста, звоните, задавайте. Э, Если вы можете, задавайте по-английски. Ну, а если вам удобнее говорить по-русски, пожалуйста, я с удовольствием переведу. А пока, как я и обещал, (coughs) в первой части нашей беседы господин Цангари сначала рассказал о том, что они представили свой пресс-релиз в месте, где произошли убийства на южной стороне города. Ну и потом я задал несколько вопросов по поводу того, вот что все-таки господин Цангари видит 
своей целью, своим назначением, скажем так, чтобы представлять наш девятый округ. И, в принципе, мне действительно очень понравилось его рассуждение о том, что, несмотря на то, что, в принципе, республиканцы, и он, в частности, является консервативным представителем республиканской партии, то есть во всех отношениях, в том числе и э, в фискальных или в финансовых отношениях, тем не менее, что мне понравилось в его ответе, это то, что сейчас не время быть не время экономить, не время быть вот тем консерватором, республиканцем в тот момент, когда столько людей страдают от того, что в связи с ковидом нет работ, бизнесы закрыты, поэтому в первую очередь его видение это сначала сделать так, чтобы люди перестали страдать, чтобы финансово перестали скажем так, получили возможность оплачивать свои квартиры, дома, получили возможность просто элементарно купить еду. Поэтому сейчас задача, по мнению господина Сангари, в том, что нужно в первую очередь заняться народом, людьми, маленьким бизнесом, средним бизнесом, ну а уже потом, когда все станет на свои места, ну вот тогда будем заниматься вернемся к нашему консервативному а, республиканизму. А, кстати, я бы хотел дать на всякий случай а, а, вам номер телефона офиса а, Сергиса Сангари. Это Эрикод 773-383-9600. 773-383-9600. Это на случай, если вам нужно будет если у вас появятся вопросы к господину Сангари, если у вас появятся какие-то, может быть, мнения, какие-то предложения, я скажу так, я с удовольствием приму ваши звонки и ваши мнения, но я просто действительно настоятельно вас призываю быть как можно более лаконичным, чтобы дать возможность нашему гостю как можно больше ответить вопросов. Ну и вот на этом я бы хотел обратиться еще раз к господину Сангари. Um, sh in short, I, I mean, I took the main ideas of what we were talking about and I translated them. Um, I did open up the mics. So, and here we go. Here's, here's the um, phone call. Добрый день, вы в эфире. Um. Good afternoon. I will try to speak in English. You will uh, correct me if so, yeah, I will uh, make mistakes. Um, you know, um, um, Mr. Sangari, you are only our hope to uh, get rid of this uh, corrupt uh, representative which sits there so many years. And uh, I understand you, you have very, very difficult uh, uh, goal to reach. And uh, in my understanding, um, what you uh, um, like uh, need to do, it's like, I know, I know like two uh, ways, uh, not two ways, it's you, you, you will need probably to uh, go both ways. First, uh, you, you need a lot of helpers to watch every precinct uh, in your uh, district, because this person has also a lot of people um, which she um, uses during election and uh, what she's she's doing uh, she puts on um, n n I mean st uh, her people next to each precinct and they give list of people to vote for some people who come for, to vote don't know anything like uh, um, Democrats uh, Republicans they, they just come to vote And they take those uh, lists and uh, go by, like, like student go by, by the cheat list. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so you need somehow maybe to create your own list. I don't know how to fight this thing. And uh, the other thing, like I said, you need uh, people who will be watchers 
and not like come and go and just like check and go out be there whole whole day of uh, election maybe th this will help because this person has a lot of money and a lot of power thank you no thank you very much uh, and you're right uh, that's why we started training poll watchers and election judges uh, even last year prior to the primary um, now because of COVID we've been we're put under restrictions um, we couldn't even really get uh, large meetings and gatherings done but I have said and we do have those people out there now I have my own f uh, brother-in-law and other family members who are election judges and we are gonna put those in uh, specific locations and they're gonna be there to make sure that that doesn't happen and you're correct as far as when lists are given out but I think at least one positive we have for the general election is that you know there's only two parties and there's gonna be only two candidates so it's gonna be either me or the incumbent uh, so when folks go in that's the only opportunity they'll have is to choose between me and her and my hope is that a lot of the independents and Democrats who are out there who are seeing what is happening in the streets the destruction of our economy it is a destruction of our economy uh, to go in and uh, vote the current incumbent out because you have to hold people accountable for being in power and letting us to get to this point absolutely and uh <coughs> meanwhile what do you think what do you hear from the uh maybe the republican party of illinois uh are there any doubts that the polls are going to be open uh no but uh, i know there's some push um that is taking place uh, to try to especially from the Democratic side, to get more people to have to mail in their votes mm -hmm. rather than go to the <laughs> polls. Um, there's going to be a fight with what is considered a provisional ballot and it was not what is not. I don't want to get, mm -hmm. get into details of it and, and scare anybody, but right now our hope is that polls are going to open up on 16 October, mm -hmm. and uh, my recommendation is go in and vote in person if you can. If you cannot because of the COVID issue and because you're – you, there's fears uh, of contracting the um, um, uh, COVID, then my recommendation is go ahead and fill out the paperwork, mm -hmm. request an absentee ballot, mm -hmm. and absentee, and then have your absentee ballot go in. Instead of uh, doing the mail-in? Uh, instead of doing the mail-in, uh, you right. could request an absentee ballot. Right. Uh, if they, certain um, counties are easier than others, mm -hmm. if they give you a lot of pushback, and you, the only way you can do it is through your mail-in ballots. You could do that. Now, I've been told by f folks that because they were so against it when they received the, the at least the application, they threw it out. Don't throw that out. Mm -hmm. Because if you throw it in the garbage, anybody can get their hand on it. Right. Okay. And if you want to shred it, my recognition is keep it. Yeah. Walk in on the day of the election, have that in your hand, and see whether or not somebody had already casted a, a ballot on your behalf without you even filling out the paperwork. So there's a way to catch the system. Well, that's one thing about our uh, listeners. I can almost, uh, I guess, guarantee is a big word, but uh, it's very important that uh, most of these listeners, they already know how important it is to, um, uh, how important it is to actually go in and vote personally, and that's why the question, I mean, th th that's the only question that they keep asking us is, do you think that the polls might not be open? Otherwise, they're all set to go in and, um, you know, vote personally. Let me take a phone call. Добрый день, вы в эфире. Здравствуйте. Я по-русски скажу. Пожалуйста, пожалуйста. Переведите ему. Не хочет ли этот господин, который баллотируется в консервативной партии, включить свою программу Education? Учить правильно и правильному. Потому что за всеми исправлениями, которые сегодня в экономике, там, 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 мы потеряем наших детей 100%. Mm -hmm. Одну секундочку, не уходите, я переведу, если у меня появится вопрос. Uh, what the listener is saying is, again, as a suggestion to include into your program as a ninth district representative uh, the emphasis on education because uh, we 
keep losing generations of kids due to the wrong education oh. and so no and i agree with him that's why i'm very big when it comes to um uh, parents having a right to send their kids wherever they want, especially with charter schools mm -hmm. or private schools. There should be money incentives to support them. Uh, I have to be in Congress to be able to do that because I, you know, without being in Congress, I could talk about it, but right. it's got to be done in Congress. And the current representative who's been there has had an opportunity. She's pushed against those schools. Yes. There's even protests right now, even from the, um, uh, from the teachers' union against the Catholic schools are open mm -hmm. because they're receiving students and they're working. Yeah. So that is definitely a priority there. I've, I've already been on the record on the charter school issue. You need to be able to send your kids to the school you want them to go to. I had a friend of mine whose uh, child in the um, fourth grade mm -hmm. was being taught about alcoholism uh, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, things that, you know, when you have a sentence for a fourth grader that says, you know, my mom is an alcoholic and you got to define what alcoholism is, I, d I don't need to teach that to my, yeah, to no, my kids. Uh, if, if you're dealing with that at home, that's a different issue. That's why we have other programs. Mm. But uh, that's not something that is going to, advance them to be able to sit 30 years from now and strike mm -hmm. deals at the strategic level with the Chinese, the Russians, or whoever else Absolutely. is out there. So Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and and you say. could translate into Russian. It's okay. You could you could take your time uh, and translate. I want to say that what he said about the process of voting is very important for many Russian-speaking because not all know разницу между абсенти вот и прямой вот mm -hmm. через через почту э, это действительно исключительно важно потому что огромная разница между абсенти вот который нельзя подделать и mail in mm -hmm. вот который подделать или убрать и уничтожить очень легко ну вот мы э, в том то этим то и занимаемся что мы объясняем нашим радиослушателям поэтому в основном все наши радиослушатели э, уже утвердились в мысли о том что они будут голосовать лично поэтому мы это всегда напоминаем настоятельно э, просим э, потому что голосовать по почте это фактически просто отдать свой голос э, в, будем говорить так в неизвестность Спасибо большое. А, теперь насчет э, образования. Вот то, что позвонил наш радиослушатель, э, господин Сангари с ним абсолютно согласен. <coughs> у, у господина Сангари уже есть, э, будем говорить так, э, он уже замечен э, официально в своей позиции о том, что э, образование или деньги должны следовать за студентом, не за школой. То есть, это значит, пожалуйста, ваучерс, это вот эти билеты, которые, вернее, деньги, которые выдаются родителям студента, и эти родители принимают решение о том, где ребенок должен учиться, вместо того, чтобы отдавать деньги школам или, скажем так, Райано или Горано, и потом школы решают, кто и где э, учится, в какой школе, и, то есть по месту жительства и так далее. Поэтому э, господин Сангари абсолютно с этим согласен, и это очень важно. Важно о том, что единственным способом для него бороться вот с этой системой образования сегодняшней, которую, кстати, поддерживает его оппонент, э, госпожа Чеховский, которая постоянно голосуют именно против вот этой ваучер программы ну вот для того чтобы с этим иметь возможность иметь голос или право голоса работать в этой программе для этого в первую очередь его нужно сначала избраться ну а потом уже попав в нижнюю палату от нашего девятого округа тогда он сможет подать свой голос официально в этой палате And another question I have, we don't have much time, but it's very important. Um, what improvements do you see uh, needed literally yesterday in your ninth district? Well, look, uh, uh, our, our district has a, is very big in transportation as far as the hubs are concerned. 
Uh, we could have had larger businesses here operating in our district. Uh, the majority of the people in my district travel outside of my district to work. So to bring those businesses back should have been done yesterday. I think in the 117th Congress, you're going to see, with Trump coming in, a big, huge explosion of the construction package. And as a matter of tying our bills to that construction package, you'll be able to bring some of those businesses back in here. And then for me, it's much more important to tie those, whether it be the uh, the Russian-speaking community, the Indian community, the mm-hmm. Korean community, to uh, the countries mm-hmm. that uh, you have family members in and you have historical ties to because that stimulates my international Britishness. It allows me now to pressure CHICOM, Chinese Communist Party, right. from the pressures it has. And I think with the GDP of the business that comes here in, into Chicago, you could flip that and you'll have enormous growth of wealth of the people in Illinois. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about getting bankrupt. You could reverse all that in a short period of time, but you have to have a person in Congress right. who mm-hmm. understands that and who's already looked at what the packages are going to be in 117 Congress to actually have worked on possible bills that could be tied to those packages. Well, I have to give you a compliment. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, let me translate it first. It's very important. Number один действие, которое считает господин Сангари, которое должно быть предпринято, это привести бизнес в его округ. То есть, потому что очень многие люди, которые живут в девятом округе, работают за пределами округа, будь то в городе Чикаго, или будь то где-нибудь там, Нейпервилл, или еще где-то. То есть, они работают за пределами округа. И это очень важно, и он считает это абсолютно важнейшим вопросом для того, чтобы привести эти бизнесы сюда для того, чтобы, во-первых, люди работали по месту жительства, это раз, а во-вторых, еще очень важно, это участвовать в программах, которые, ну, мы все знаем, что в девятом округе очень большая русскоговорящая комьюнити, э, очень большая э, индусская комьюнити, очень большая корейская комьюнити, То есть это очень важно создать вот эти отношения деловые со странами, э, и с, э, членами которых являются жители девятого э, округа, и тогда это стимулирует вот это развитие бизнеса э, в самом округе, приносит доходы, ну и тем самым э, улучшает э, ситуацию в самом округе. That's very important, it really is. And uh, now the question is, due to this COVID thing, there's a lot of not even rumors, they're just opinions, but nevertheless, mm, what what is there to do with all that empty commercial real estate that is, at least in your district, you know, not to mention other districts, uh, what do you think should be done? Because we know that as of today, a lot of those commercial buildings are going to be empty. People decided to work at home. People decided not to go the yeah, office yeah. route. Well, business has changed, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, some service sectors may never be the same again. Right. Uh, and uh, keep in mind that uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, has taken a much more advanced step now mm-hmm. based on how businesses are operating. Uh, so it, it, But it gives you the opportunity, if you're advanced-looking, especially on the technical uh, on the tech side of the house to create new type of businesses that are going to be looking at future possible uses of technology for new formats of business mm-hmm. uh, so uh, it's there's positives there but if I cannot alleviate the pressures on you just maintaining what you have today and expanding your business opportunities I cannot give you the flexibility to do it and Congress right now is not giving that opportunity. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the last thing is, if you don't have domestic tranquility, you know, tomorrow, they bur- uh, this weekend, again, they're going to try to maybe burn some more businesses on Michigan Avenue. Well, I'll tell you what, when those people leave, they're gone. They're not coming back. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow... They're the same token. they got to go somewhere. Yeah. And when they're done over there, in the future, they're going to come to your district. Yeah. They've m- multiple times in my district, they tried to go after uh, Old Orchard. Yeah. to try to burn that down and loot it. And they've already scouted it. At least we've stood against them. But there will come a time that, uh, you know, uh, the bad guy just has to go through once. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, again, it is it is a simple fix, but those simple fixes have become enormous challenges because the incumbents have painted themselves in a corner over 20 years, and they cannot mm-hmm. move off of their own position, which is destroying the nation. That's why you need to be able to have new people in, and uh, that's the only way you could do it. Uh, итак, uh, в заключение я переведу то, что сказал мистер Сангари, это очень, опять же, очень важная вещь. Uh, я задал вопрос по поводу вот этих офис uh, билдингов которые, м- ну, может так получиться, что они будут пустовать и так далее. Uh, на что мистер Сангари правильно сказал, что, ну, нужно смотреть в будущее, нужно перестраивать бизнесы, uh, перес- то есть переделывать процесс переделывания или продвижение другого рода бизнеса, это всегда инновационная ситуация, поэтому, но с другой стороны, до тех пор, пока люди не смогут почувствовать себя в финансовой безопасности, мы ничего предпринять не сможем, а для того, чтобы дать людям то, что им необходимо, для этого нужно иметь правильных людей на правильных местах, в данном случае господин Ансангари представителем от 9 округа. Итак, я хочу еще раз дать номер телефона офиса господина Сангари 773-383-9600, если у вас появятся вопросы, мнения. 20 секунд, можно? Yes, 20 секунд. Я хочу сказать слушателям, что так как Сангари новый человек, который пытается попасть в Конгресс, его имя неизвестно. И очень важно, чтобы люди, которые слушали, и которым он понравился, и которые могут это сделать, поставили его надписи у себя на фронт-ярд, чтобы проезжающие, проходящие могли ознакомиться с этим именем, и когда время придет голосовать, у них будет выбор, и они будут знать, по крайней мере, о ком речь идет. Спасибо большое. Спасибо большое, мистер Сангари. Спасибо большое. Всего доброго. Мы здесь. Мы здесь, чтобы поддержать. Спасибо большое. Вы сделали хороший работу. Спасибо И You get get me into Congress. Absolutely. Uh, that's the only way I could help you. I, I do my best outside, but the best way to do it is get me there so I can have the effects. Thank you very much. God bless. Until the next time. God bless.